Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I hope all of you are getting through your middle of the week great. And we have another read aloud in our Passage of Time series. And still the turtle watched. So a couple things to think about as I'm reading this book this morning. Think about how much time do you think passes from the beginning of the book to the end of the book? And think about the title, And Still the Turtle Watched. Think about, as we go throughout the book, do you think that's a good title for the book? Uh, would you have named it anything different? And why? And then the third thing to think about is, this story is told really uniquely. I want you to think about how the author is telling the story and how that makes you feel. All right, with that, let's get started. And still the turtle watched. Beautiful, beautiful entry to the book. Long ago, when the eagles still built their nests on the cliffs by the river, an old man and his grandson stood beside a large rock. The rock stood all by itself on the bluff at the bend in the river where the bright water flowed to the bitter sea. Here at our summer lodge, the old man said, I will carve the turtle. He will be the eyes of Manitou, the all father to watch the Delaware people. And he will be our voice to speak to Manitou. In summer, you will bring your children to the rock to greet the turtle and they will bring their children and Manitou will bless our land with plenty. Our people with straight bodies and our strong arms and peace shall reign beside our fire. And so he shaped the stone, and then the turtle watched. <clears throat> he watched. The green of summer turned to the gold of autumn. He watched the gold of autumn become the white of winter. He watched the white of winter give birth to the flowers of springtime. Then summer came again. The turtle was happiest in the summer, for then the children came, and then their children, and then their children's children's children. Year followed year, the great bear chased the little bear around, around the northern sky. As time wore on, fewer and fewer children came to greet the turtle. Have I watched badly, he thought? Does Manitou no longer hear me? The rains washed him, the winds blew him, countless snows chilled him, blowing dust rubbed him. Now it took a sharp and knowing eye to see the turtle. Then one day strangers came. They did not greet the turtle. They did not speak to Manitou. Their axes chopped and killed the forest. Their shouting drowned the lark's bright music. The turtle watched, but did not understand. What do you think is happening right now? How much time has passed? Who are these new strangers? He watched as stranger followed stranger followed stranger. He watched white water turn to brown. He felt the air grow heavy. He heard strange growling noises, still the songs of birds. At night, new lights glowed near the ground. They dimmed the stars of Manitou. The little turtle grew sad. 
Why do I watch, he thought. Why do I speak to Manitou when Manitou no longer hears me? The air is dark and dirty. The stars are dim. The noises hurt my ears. My children have not come for many times, many moons. In the night, the turtle wept. One day, some boys came near the rock. They stopped and pointed. The turtle's heart beat faster. They've come to see me, he murmured to himself. My children have returned. Thank you, Manitou. He watched them as they capered around him. Black boxes on their shoulders blared loud noise that hurt the tur turtle's ears. They pointed shiny round things at him. The turtle heard a hiss. He saw a shining arc of color leap toward him. He felt cool wetness on his eyes. He could no longer see. He could no longer watch for Manitou. Deep in the, his darkness, he felt the cracking of his heart. How does this make you feel? No one watched for Manitou as days, months, and years passed and the turtle stood in darkness. Then one day a man came. He knew that the Delaware people had once summered here. He hoped to find something that they had left behind but searched all day and found nothing. He was tired. He was going home. Suddenly, he saw the rock standing all by itself on the bluff. At the bend in the river where the bright water flows to the bitter sea, something about the rock called to him as it stood forlorn and covered with graffiti. He was a man who saw beneath what first appeared. He had a sharp and knowing eye. He had a wise and loving heart. He knew the ways of the Manitou. The turtle did not know the man was there. The paint had blinded his eyes. The paint had stopped up his ears. Then he felt a finger on his head. It stroked back along his carapace and he shivered deep inside. The man came back with workmen. They pried the rock out of the ground and hoisted it up on a truck. The little turtle was very frightened. He did not know what was happening. The truck swayed and bumped along for a long time. Then the rock was hoisted off of the truck. Hands patted and rubbed the turtle. He felt sharp smelling wetness pour over his head and his eyes started to clear and his ears start, started to hear as the paint was scrubbed away. No longer is he watching by the river. He is indoors at the botanical garden where the children come to see him and they will bring their children and their children's children's children and he will speak of them to Manitou. So here's a little note on the last page. And I want you to think about what this note means and think about if this is a fictional or non-fiction story. If you live in or visit New York City, you can see the turtle at the Watson building of the New York Botanical Garden. Weathered and worn, its features are no longer so distinct, although its basic shape and nature can still be seen by those who know and believe. How much time has passed? What illustrations or clues let us understand how much time has passed in this book? How does it make you feel? How did the author tell the story? From whose perspective is the story told? I hope you all have a great Wednesday and I will see you soon in office hours. All right.